Okay, coming back to our full study, we're up to number 41 in Proverbs, chapter 9, and going to be many fools in Proverbs, all different kind of fools. And amazing how we've done 40 fools already, and we find ourselves as Christians, fools, and where we ought not to be. And the reason for this study is that we do not become fools. And I guess another reason for this study would be to show where we are foolish. And if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So Proverbs 9, 13, the next fool, number 41, a foolish woman is clamorous. She's simple and knoweth nothing. Clamorous speaking, repeating loud words, noisy, vocal, loud, raging. So, here it comes to a summary as a woman. She's talkative. She's noisy. She's loud. She's angry. She knows nothing. That's a foolish woman. Anybody who doesn't know nothing is foolish. But when you got a loud mouth to go with it, and you're not right in your family, whether you be in your father's house or you be in your husband's house or your own house. The state the fact is, women can be foolish. They can be loud. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. How's your mother doing? Do you cause her grief? Do you cause her tears? Is she in agony? The father is happy. He's glad over a wise son. If your mother is in tears, your mother is fretting because of you. You are a fool. You are a foolish son. You don't bring glad tidings. You don't bring rejoicing. If you bring a heavy heart upon your mother, you're a fool. I've done that before I was saved. Growing up in teenage years, I, I caused my mom a heavy heart. I thank God I got things right with her. I thank God she's saved. I thank God it's under the blood. But how you doing? Are you saved? Is your mother threatened? Are you not saved? And your mother's praying for your soul? You're a fool. So we got a woman and we got a son. Again, foolishness gives your mother aging. It gives her anxiety. It gives them burdensome cares. And in the mistreatment of your mother, the Bible counts you as a fool. Chapter 10, verse 8. The wise, that's opposite of fool. We saw that in verse 1. In heart will receive commandments. But a prating, prating fool shall fall. Wise is not a fool. And fools are not wise. It's a contradiction in terms. So what Solomon lays out, here's a wise, and what's the opposite of wise? A fool. Prating is talking much on trifling subjects. Oh, we saw talking much in verse number 13, the foolish woman. So this could be male or female. And there are no, there's no other sexes. Talking idly. Fall is never good. It can cause bodily harm and injury. A practicing fool shall fall. You're not standing. You're down. You're out for the call. court. You're out for the count. Excuse me. It may cause lasting injuries or even be fatal. I don't talk to a person that is a foolish is not looking good for the future of judgment. And Matthew 12, 36, real quick. Matthew 12, 36. But I say unto you the words of Jesus, that every idle word that goes with our practicing fool, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Doesn't see the Christ or the great white throne judgment. So, 
But a prat and fool will fall. He will fall at the judgment of God, whether saved or lost. Because it says idle talk. Talking idly is the meaning of practicing. And you're going to fall before God in sin. As much as that foolish woman talks so much, here's a male or female talking so much, it causes you to fall. You gotta watch what you say. You gotta watch what you do. You gotta watch how you say it. You gotta put a watch on your tongue, James says. That tongue is trouble. It can't be tamed. Man, you can train a monkey, you can train an elephant, but you can't train the tongue. Proverbs 10.10 10. He that winketh with his eye causes sorrow. You know, you're up to something. Wink, wink, wink. Wink, wink. You know, you're in a company of people and you wink to a, another associate. Like, eh, eh, yep. But a practicing fool again, here he is. Wait a minute, no. Yeah, verse 10. Okay. Verse 8, verse 10. But the practicing fool shall fall. So it, it's, okay, I felt, I felt for that for a minute. It's repeated. It's a verily, verily, it's an important thing. That a fool with idle talk, as a woman with, with clamorous of idle chatting, when our mouths speak of what not should be spoken, there's a fall. Wood, hay, or stubble. For the Christian. For the lost, just more sins are in the book where his name is not found in the Lamb's Book of Life. We gotta learn to shut up. You know, when we idly talk about movies and, and television and sports and the nonsense of the sinfulness talk of, of the unsaved, God's listening, He's recording. And Matthew 12, 36 says, We shall give an account of every idle word that gave no glory to God, it gave no glory to Jesus Christ, and it gave no uplifting for a fellow Christian, and it didn't give any help to a lost man. It was vain, stupid. Chapter 10, verse 14. Wise men, there's a contradiction again, lay up knowledge, but the mouth, we've been talking about talking, the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Again, when we run that frame, chapter uh, 10, verse 8, 10 and 14, it's a foolish mouth with what we saw in chapter 9, verse 13. We got the fool versus the wise. Contradiction in terms. It's keeping or losing, destruction. Destruction. Matthew 7 24. Matthew 7 24. Preachers say a lot. Matthew 7 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one or love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Destruction. Uh, and more to read. You're going to do right as a fool? I'm sorry, you're going to do right as a wise man? Or are you going to do wrong as a fool? Where do you want to be standing today? Let's, let's forget our past. Let's put our past, if we will, I will, under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's cleansed us. He's washed me. What do I want to do one minute from now? What do I want to do one day from now? One week from now? One month now, from now? One year from now? What Do I want to be foolish? I don't. But I'm prone for foolishness. I'm a sinner. But what is my spiritual aim? Do I want to be wise in God or do I want to be a fool in God? Do I want to face judgment or do I want to face rewards? How about you? I want rewards. In verse 14 again it says, The wise man lay up knowledge, 
But the mouth of the fools is near destruction. Destruction. That's not good. It's ruin. You know, a tornado comes through and leaves destruction. A hurricane comes through leaves destruction. A fool comes in with his mouth, destruction. Proverbs 10, 18. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool, a liar. Again, we can reference right back to the mouth. You say lies. You're a fool. Thou shalt not bear false witness, the Bible says. It's not proper to be a liar. It's improper in conduct for a Christian to lie. It's improper in conduct for anybody to lie. They have a term, in, if you're to go before the court and you lie before the court, it's called slander. And you can be brought up on ch charges for slander. And how much slander is lying and slandering is a fool. Fools will lie. We all lie. One of the main chief reasons for a lie is fear. Number two, pride. And they may be in reverse in order. You may not want to tell the truth because, oh, it would break you down and make you look bad. I had a preacher tell me one time, he says, listen, if you want to stop lying? You lied to somebody? You take that flesh, you go to the person you lied to and say, listen, I'm a Christian. I'm saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. What I just told you was a lie. And I'm confessing my sin before God and before you that I did not want to do that, but I did. I lied to you. And you'll find how much and how quick your flesh will hate the lie next time. We lie out of fear. Starts with early childhood. Did you take the cookie? Oh, I didn't take the cookie. And you're afraid because you're, you should get your behind whapped. And you should get, you know, other chastisements of, you know, of trouble. We don't want to get in trouble. So we'll lie our way out of trouble. We don't want to break our pride and make us look, you know, as we have done something wrong. So we'll lie. That's a fool. A fool will not break his pride. A fool will not break his fear. He'll hide behind them. And yet a man of wisdom will step up and say, yes, I did that. This is the truth. I've had many times in my life, when I, I can think of one time at, at work. When I worked for, for the, uh, the newspaper company, every couple of times I did things wrong. <laughs> and listen, you know, it, it, all night long my conscience told, you know, you got to tell your boss. And the other part of me said, no, don't tell him, let him find out. So at the end of the shift, I go up to my boss and I say, well, you know, close the door, I got to talk to you. I did this. And I found out, you know, when you owe up to the boss and you get the truth and you don't be a fool, your boss can help you out. And he's helped me many times. Sometimes the truth is not always going to set you free. I had another time I called my boss and I got in trouble at work and wasn't really, it was stupid trouble. Not on my part, but you had someone else come in foolishly and I was fired and don't think just by telling the truth is going to get you out of trouble. Telling the truth may get you in more trouble. Jesus never lied. He says, I'm the truth, John 14, 6, and they gave him a cross. Peter, James, John, and, and the disciples and Paul went out preaching the truth and told the truth, and they got themselves killed. Fox's Book of Mars are filled with Christians that told the truth, and they got brutality and death. And liars, they just sometimes just close your eyes and go off in eternity. We live in a wicked world, but according to the Bible, the Bible says a fool is a liar. And you can change whatever you want in the world and the world standards and all that. You're going to, again, we're going to face judgment. All truth and lies will be weighed out. And there will be justice. To the liar into the one that tells the truth in the eyes of God. So 
We have the re repetition of the fool in his big mouth. Don't hide a lie. Wrestle with the flesh and spirit and to get right out right then and there. And if it, the lie is not known, don't wait. Bring it right up to the person in charge. Or the person that, that's been offended. Bring it right up to them. Deal with it right then and there. And if you're called to account by somebody that, you know, you could lie, don't lie. Don't be a fool. Fools lie. Fools slander. Proverbs 10, 21. The lips of the righteous. All right, here's another contra. Righteous. The lips of the righteous. Feed many. But fools, fools are not righteous. <laughs> Now, we may be, as a Christian, we may be in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We may be the children of God, but when we are fools, we are taking on the characteristics of our old father, the devil. Those saved, I can get in the flesh, and in foolishness, I've gotten in the flesh. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. A fool won't get wisdom. He will not go to know and how to apply what he knows. Wisdom is not only having knowledge to do something, but it's the ability to do what you know. There are many foolish Christians out there saved. Bible says going to all the world and preach the gospel. They won't. They're afraid. They're scared. And yet that's what the Bible, the Bible has comforted us, has out, outfitted us to go and tell the world about the gospel. What is it? That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to scriptures. And we got gospel tracts. You can open up your mouth. You can tell somebody about your own personal testimony. But the lips of the righteous, they feed many. Involved in many track ministry, preaching ministry, teaching ministry. Everything that God has given me ability for others. That they may grow and learn and come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ or come to the knowledge of being a Christian. A fool will sit back and won't do nothing for nobody. And he's not even doing nothing for self because as a Christian, a fool that won't attain the knowledge and will not go out and, and do for many, he's not going to get no returns of crowns or rewards. So he's not even thinking about himself. And yet what we already looked at, he's talking, talking, talking foolishness that goes to no wisdom and no knowledge to help anybody that's saved or lost. We can run that aspect again of the mouth. I can talk, I, I know something right now, I could talk about, well, I won't, but, oh, you know, this baseball team, that baseball team, and this radio program, and this, this, uh, uh, political party, that political, he can talk all, he, so what? I can get up there and, and speak about Jesus Christ, how to be saved, I can speak about Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, how Jesus saved, uh, I can speak about many times, we're going through the Gospel of John, we're going through First Chronicles, we've gone through the books of the Bible, I've got many things, I'm teaching you right now how not to be a fool. That is to your glory, that is to your honor, that you can know what God disapproves, and what God approves, that you can grow, and together you and I could be righteous in the eyes of God. Or I can just shut up and do nothing, you can just turn this off, and we just don't do nothing, don't learn nothing. It's amazing. And I think I know, I think we're at a good subject right now. I, it's you know young. I'm not in a rush, and I think I'd be a good place right there to stop. We'll be back in chapter ten, Lord willing, again. But I think the next couple fools will take us into a new new subject beyond what we're doing right now. But let's look at what we've talked about so far: the mount. The tongue. James. Good, good James. We'll read it. James. 
James chapter 3, verse 2. For many things we offend all. You're going to be you. You are going to be offensive to somebody at some time, and probably everybody, some point in time. America is always on the offense. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able to bridle the whole body. There's never going never going to be in your life you're not going to offend somebody, and if you not have ever offended anybody. <laughs> he says, you're the perfect man. man. Listen, Jesus Christ, God manifested in the flesh, offended the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes. He offended many. Enough that the entire nation cried out, crucify him, crucify him. I would think they found him offensive. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that we may that they may obey us, we turn about their whole body. I mean, we can put that little thing in the horse's mouth. We can horse go right, horse go left, or stop. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven of fierce winds, yet are turned about with a very small helm. Whithersoever the governor or the pilot, listen, that, you know, that big ship is turned by that little wheel. And the mechanicalness of that, that helm. That ship can go right to the starboard, go left to port. That horse can go right, that horse can go left. Little tiny things. Even so, the tongue is a little member. It's a muscle. It's hidden behind our lips. That way, you know, you can flex your muscles on your arm, show how strong you are. It stays behind the lips, but it's a little member. And boasts is great things. How great I am. How wonderful I am. There are some people, when you listen to them talk, uh, them, 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 from them. I, me, myself, and I. How great I am. How wonderful I am. That's the tongue. And behold how great a matter a little fire can do it. Paul, I mean, James likens our tongue to a fire. Now, I'm not talking about heartburn. I'm talking about things that can burn and destroy. Sticks and stones may, may break my bones, but names never hurt me. You want to make a bet? There have been people who have committed suicide because of someone's big flapping fire. There are people's lives are completely ruined today because of someone else's flapping tongue muscles. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. There are women and children today put under great distress of someone's tongue. There are people in churches today who have been be humbled because of someone's big fat tongue. And we learn through the Bible that's a fool. And when we talk about the stupid little things in life that has no matter. When we talk about other people of no reference of Jesus Christ in the Bible, when you lift up sports and television and movies of no glory, of no honor to Jesus Christ, when we talk about finances and the job, more than the Bible and Jesus Christ, that's foolish. When we have to lie about others and lie about ourselves, that's pride and fear. And we let them two sins overpower our life to slander. Because we are not worthy to get in trouble. Because I don't want to get in trouble. That's a fool. And we have called our parents. And no one can say, oh, I never did this. We have caused our parents, our, our fathers, or our mothers. When the Bible says, honor thy father and the, honor thy mother and thy father, both New and Old Testament. There's been times we caused our parents, either one or both of them, we've caused them grief and sorrow and troublesome. And the Bible says, it's a fool. You may be a wife that just blabbers, blabber, 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 blabber. 
You may be a daughter that blab, 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 blabs. We used to call it a nag. Stop nagging me. You're nagging. The Bible calls you foolish. Oh, how we got little words to, to soften our sin. And if you stand in any of the accounts today, I stand in lies. I told lies. Lies I wanted to tell and lies that came out. I didn't realize it was a lie to after it came out. Bible calls us foolish, fools. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ and get it right with the offender. You know, it'd be great, you know, okay, yeah, Lord God, here's my sin, I confess it. All right, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What about the party that you offended? Have you gotten it right with them? Oh, God could bless you more if you got things right with the people that you offended. It's not the, does not the book of Matthew tell us we're to go to the party that has affected and get things right with them? You know, you're going to bring an offering, get it right with your brother before you bring the offering. Reconciliation. I mean, Christ has reconciled us back to God. Can't you reconcile the person that you offended? We're going to offend somebody. But we don't want to break that pride, do we? That foolish pride. Mm -hmm. And the foolishness of fear. Why don't we seek to please God, our Father? Remember what we read in, in Proverbs? A wise son make his father glad. Hey, let's, let's make our father glad by not being foolish. And when we do play the fool, let's get right with God by confessing our sins of our heart, truthfulness or repenting, seeking the pardon that we are guilty, and then making it right with the people that we offended. Your flesh will hate it. Your pride will hate it. You can't hide behind that fear. Once you remove the fear. 